Now in other general Ford news. I've been covering this for a few weeks now, but more and more on Ford models that you've ordered or will be ordering, you can cancel things such as active park assist, auto start stop. So you definitely will want to talk to your dealer. I've covered it in videos before, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time going model by model, but essentially a lot of models, you can remove the auto start stop so that you can get your built, your vehicle built faster. And on all models, try to get accessories from your dealer, remove them from your order. The simpler the build, the faster you'll get it. So you're probably going to want to consider looking over your build and seeing if there's anything that you can remove. And as we move forward, you can tell that the microchip issue is real because Ford is, depending on the model, either offering the choice so that you can avoid delays removing active park assist or auto start stop, or they're just going to be dropping it all together. So that's that. I mean, you know, I've covered that for the last two weeks and I don't want to repeat myself too much for those that follow every single week. And if you, you know, even follow occasionally, it's free to subscribe. So it really does help the channel grow, helps us, you know, get out, do more tests. So speaking of tests, we've been testing out the Bronco everywhere from everything that can be helpful in regards to information about, you know, tricks to get better miles per gallon, tricks for not getting your door dent uh, scratched like mine did. So I'll be coming out shortly with, you know, some must know tricks on the Bronco. And one big one, because I'm seeing everyone get lifted and actually in Florida, every truck seemed to be lifted. Some were lifted towards the sky, nose towards the sky, which I have issues with that in regards to safety. You know, you don't really see all that well what's, you know, close to the front of your bumper. And it's a different style. I also saw people getting stuck in the sand on a very simple beach with hard packed sand because their nose up in the sky. And it was weird. I, I don't know what's going on with that style, but if you do lift your truck, I have no problem with putting on bigger tires and lifting a truck so that it is better at off-roading. I think it's actually a really cool idea because it's useful and it's practical. So if I don't understand the practicality or the logic of something, I, I tend to have you know issues with it or with my lack of understanding. So if anyone's got a jacked up truck towards the sky and there's an actual practical use for it, teach me learn me new things, I'll uh, gladly do it, but if you are getting lifted, do make sure that you get aligned afterwards because otherwise your tires will wear unevenly. Check your tire pressure when you're airing up, airing down, because if you overinflate your tire, you're gonna wear the middle of your tire and tires are expensive these days, so I do care about y'all. And if you, for, you know, don't inflate your tire enough, well then you're gonna have really bad, you're gonna be affected in your miles per gallon, your fuel economy. So that is some information I want to cover, but I'll have more tips and tricks coming out for what will not just be the Bronco, but really any F-150 model. But speaking of the Bronco, since we're on the subject, it looks like November 10th is gonna be the date where they stop building 2022 models. It'll probably be, you know, a few days or a week where they're not pumping out models because they're just making, you know, some adjustments in the factory. And then they're going to be on to building 2023s. So some of us who currently have an order in or will be trying to buy a Bronco, you're going to get a 2023. So what can you expect? Well, you can expect some colors being dropped, some colors being added, and who knows, maybe for the Bronco, they'll come out with something like the Rattler. So it's like a Raptor extra light to you know, convince people into a uh, off-road focused model where you can't have uh, items, options that create and require more microchips, such as heated steering wheel, heated seats, uh, Copilot 360, 360 camera, all those kinds of goodies which require more microchips so that, that's what's going on with that now ford some of us are worried because there's this division at ford between the evs and the ice models ice models aren't going to disappear we're going to need them ford is going to need because of the cafe rules coming back and actually coming back with a vengeance <laughs> looks like they're going to try to even increase the cafe rules and the re their regulations so it's going to be hard for ICE models and companies are going to need to sell a whole lot of electric vehicles to not be penalized for the gasoline vehicles that they do. So certain icons, I can imagine like the Bronco, the F-150, 
you know, for a time, they're still going to offer V8s uh, for the F-150, but more and more vehicles are going to need the fleet average for fuel consumption is going to need to go down. And that's a fleet average. So you need to sell a whole lot of electric vehicles to have something like a gas guzzling Shelby Mustang still available. So what is Ford doing to able to provide us with more ICE engines for those of us that love our ICE engines? Well, it looks like they're working on a hydrogen engine. And it looks like the hydrogen, it's reported and suspected that a hydro hydrogen engine would be pretty neat because that's 15% more power. Hydrogen is extremely explosive. It's got its dangers, uh, but I can remember a chemistry and advanced chemistry back in school. <laughs> I do remember someone, uh, I'm not going to say it was me, but someone took a little bit of hydrogen in uh, a beacon and lit it up and the beacon absolutely exploded. You do get more power, more explosive power out of hydrogen. It needs to be handled with care. But for those of for those, you know, whether it's YouTube or any major news source, they'll say, oh well, you know, it's gonna be really complex and complicated. It's not that complicated. When you have very clean water, you know, distilled water, and if I recall, you throw an electric current through it, you separate the hydrogen from the oxygen. So what's neat is essentially you take water, you work on it a little, and you separate hydrogen from it, which means exhaust would just be dropping, you know, humidity or a little bit of water, probably a bit humidity coming out the exhaust. So you're just gonna be pumping oxygen back into the system, oxygen and, you know, whatever water doesn't get used up. So that's how you make hydrogen. Hydrogen, hydrogen can be actually made within a vehicle as it runs, but of course, probably the government will say that's too, da too dangerous and not profitable enough for major corporations. So likely, yes, you'll need to, most likely in the future, if this takes off, stop at a hydrogen processing station so essentially like a gas station, but for hydrogen, where they on site will probably be producing hydrogen and you'll pay a bunch of money for it. But it's extremely efficient, uh, extremely, extremely efficient, m multitudes more efficient than gasoline, and it's more, po it's more powerful. And it's cool because, you know, we're gonna be pumping oxygen into the atmosphere. So instead of, you know, pumping CO2, we'll be pumping that and we should still get our powerful motors, even more powerful, and hopefully they will sound great. But I'm going to be keeping an eye on that story because I do think that's an, a story to follow. I think I've always thought hydrogen would be fantastic as an option. And batteries aren't necessarily, you know, the, the final and only solution. And right now, lithium batteries, I've got my problems with lithium batteries, and I'm hoping to see other battery technology from things other than lith lithium being produced. You know, earlier I have talked about Ford working on a, I believe, if I recall correctly, because it's been about six months, but it was iron, iron ion. Uh, you know, I'm invested in a company that is working on aluminum ion graphene batteries. So, of course, I will continue to cover all that is really, you know, futuristic exciting and new to the automobile market and i'll always be full filled with tips and tricks now i think that covers it for today because i must be getting near what people will accept as a reasonable length for a video so thank you so much if you've made it this far i really appreciate you and i really appreciate you sticking with me just comment finisher if you did make it this far and until next time i wish you all more cars and more power i do hope if you've ordered a vehicle, you get it soon. These problems aren't only at Ford, but that's mostly what I cover other than the odd review to help you know, us understand more of the Ford product. I like to specialize so that I can bring specialized information. So I hope you have enjoyed this video and I do hope you have a fantastic weekend. Take care.